Welcome Steelers Nation, I'm Stan Saverin, and it's my pleasure to bring in former Steeler offensive lineman, Ted Peterson. Pete, really good to see you again. It's How great, I'm doing great, and great to see you as well. Thank you. Uh, draft choice, 1977, you're coming to a franchise in Eastern Illinois, yes. way before Tony Romo, by the way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you're, in our eyes, you're the most famous Eastern Illinois graduate. You're kind. Um, what was it like coming to a Super Bowl champion, one that had been dynastic? Well, I was scared to death because of this. You have to remember, you know, I'm in college and the Steelers had won two Super Bowls while I was there. <clears throat> then I was drafted, as you said, uh, in the fourth round in 77. And just thinking about competing against the uh, the Steeler defense of that time, uh, you, you would remember that in 1976, they didn't make it to the Super Bowl, but they probably had one of the top two or three defenses of, of, of all times. And of course, I had to come and uh, try to uh, win a spot on the team by competing against them in front of Noel and the other coaches. So that was pretty intimidating. That defense, by the way, I'm sure fans remember, <clears throat> that's the year Terry Bradshaw went out and they had to go to the running game with Mike Kruzek. Uh, nine games, yeah. they allowed a grand total of 28 points, five shutouts, um, and won their last game and only lost to the Raiders because Franco and Rocky were hurt. So that sets the stage. So Joe Green still in his prime, L.C. Greenwood. Mm -hmm. What was that like in training camp? Said, here, kid, try your luck with these guys, Dwight White. Well, you forgot uh, Ernie Holmes. Fats Holmes, <laughs> yeah. I... And he in particular uh, was pretty, uh, pretty fearsome because, you know, he would go kind of easy, nine out of ten plays, you know, wouldn't play real hard. And then I happened to tick him off one time. <laughs> you, you know, you're trying to make the team, right? So you're caught between a rock and a hard place because you're either going to block him well and get in a fight, or not block well and then chucks on, on, your, on your back, you know what I mean? So I could remember, uh, you know, hitting into him pretty good, uh, playing center. Uh, Mike Webster was getting some Gatorade and uh, I blocked into him pretty good, you know, and he, he looked me in the eyes and said, okay, Peterson, so you want to play football? <laughs> and the next time I see him cranking up his forearm, which is the size of my leg, and he just clock me across my face mask, you know, and I'm thinking, well, welcome to the NFL. But Yeah, an angry fat was oh, not a good boy. thing for an offensive yeah. offensive lineman. Yeah. Um, you mentioned playing center. Yes. Uh, Webby, of course, was, was the center. Yes. But they asked you to play all three positions, and I'm wondering, they did. had you had that versatility in college, or was this new to you, and how much, I mean, maybe your versatility helped you make the team, but did it hinder your development at one position in particular? Uh, two parts to the question. First of all, the Steelers love drafting, if you remember, they love drafting tight ends and centers. Centers have to snap the ball and, and block, obviously, so it, it takes a special talent and athletic ability. Noel Chuck wanted athletes, uh, go find the athletes, so Bill Nunn comes to Eastern, hands me a basketball and says, shoot around in the gym. I start out as, uh, so they thought I was a pretty good athlete, and I started out as a tight end at Eastern and ended up playing center. So I had uh, maybe both of what they liked. I was pretty athletic. I could run well, as all the Steelers uh, linemen did back then, and they expected you to play more than one position. But uh, to get real comfortable in one spot, it, it, you've got to stay there for a while. You're correct. Interesting, you mentioned Bill Nunn. Yes. Everybody's aware of his history and what he meant, uh, not only to football, but society uh, in general. Uh, Eastern Illinois is a smaller school, but we think about, you know, finding the Donnie Shells and the L.C. Greenwoods. Right, right. Um, and, and, and I'm wondering, uh, him coming to you, um, they were looking for football players wherever they could find them. They did, and, and uh, I, I think the Cowboys – started doing that as uh, early as the Steelers. You know, no one looked at the smaller schools at one time. And then the Cowboys and the Steelers started finding people like that. So it wasn't so unusual. So I benefited from that, uh, that approach. Mentioning Mike Webster, so many of the offensive linemen who came into the organization in that era said they just kind of followed Webby around like he was the lead duck, and then you'd see all the little ducklings behind him. Um, did you watch what Webby did 
both on the field and off the field in terms of workout and preparation as most of the other guys did? Mm -hmm. I did, but I also followed John Kolb as well. You know, I played all the spots. Um, I played a little guard, some in the Super Bowl too, but you know what? I never took a snap at center in the regular season, preseason a little bit. So, you know, behind Webby, but John Kolb really was a great model for me because he played tackle and I was basically a tackle meant to be uh, meant to play there, but uh, they were great role models all the way around for us. John, of course, now a member of the Steelers Hall of yes. Honor, deservedly so, absolutely. Yes. Um, so your second year in, mm -hmm. you're in a Super Bowl. Your third year in, you're in a Super Bowl and you win them. Did you begin to think, oh, well, this is going to happen every year? You know what, I don't know if I did, but uh, I was certainly happy to be there because when I have to tell you, when I was in college, I wanted a national championship ring so bad you know, and never got close. Two years after I graduated, they win the national championship at Eastern. <laughs> but um, in my rookie year, um, how about this? My rookie year, we lose to um, uh, the Denver Broncos. Denver. Denver loses to Dallas. Dallas showed more interest in me than any other team pre-draft. So I'm thinking, oh, that was my chance to get a Super Bowl ring. So then the following year, we play Dallas in Super Bowl 13 and we win. and course we won the next year so it was pretty cool but uh, leading into the Super Bowl uh, year my first one in 78 I heard Joe Green say to a reporter you know we'll we'll see you at the summit and you know I'm from Illinois it's real flat out there I didn't know what a summit was you know or of any kind he meant of course see it he thought we were going to the Super Bowl so that was a pretty exciting time in the in that year Ted <clears throat> and in that game um, you had a, still the core nucleus of the earlier Super Bowl championships in 74 mm -hmm. and 75. Absolutely. And I wonder if their experience in that regard was translated or transmitted to guys who had not yet experienced that. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. My rookie year in 77, there was nine guys that made the team, and uh, which is unusual, you know, at that time. But still there was... I don't know how many guys, uh, well, 16 guys won four Super Bowls, I think, is that correct? And uh, so there was a great core and probably their experience, not to mention their extreme talent, you know, really led us to, you know, win a close one over the Cowboys because they were pretty good at that time too. They certainly were. Both those games were two of the most exciting Super Bowls ever played. Yeah, they were. Um, what do you remember about first Super Bowl thirteen? Um, and your participation, and then against the Rams in 14 in Pasadena. Well, the first of all, the, my first Super Bowl experience, I have to tell you that I was a little in awe. We, we, we come up to the Orange Bowl and buses as we normally do, and we couldn't really get off the bus because the people swarmed around us and there was uh, police on horseback trying to make a path for us to get in there, and I thought, well, this is how the Rolling Stones are when they go, uh, <laughs> you know, and uh, and it was it was quite a game. And and I was more I wasn't a spectator, but I was more of a special teams player at that time. And then the following year uh, for Super Bowl 14, John injured his so shoulder. I played the last nine games of the season, including the first playoff games, and uh, he got rehab. So he started at left tackle against uh, against the Rams. And then Sam Davis got hurt, and uh, a real cool thing. And I wasn't really a guard, um, but he asked the offensive line coach, Raleigh Dodge, he says, put Ted in there. You know, so I got a chance to play some guard in, in Super Bowl fourteen, and largely because of John. Well, obviously you made a great impression to get that endorsement. Yeah, well, well, thank you. Uh, but uh, John and I were very close, and, uh, and I'm certainly... Uh, looking forward to his in induction this evening as well. You mentioned always wanting to get that national championship ring, yes. didn't get it. Was the feeling of win winning a Super Bowl, regardless of your level of participation, either one of those games, obviously more the second than the first, um, did it reach the level of expectation as kids? We all dream about hitting a home run the bottom of the ninth to win the World Series or catching a touchdown pass. Did the actual excitement of achieving championships with the Steelers 
reach your level or your anticipation of what that might feel like? I think it did stand as much as humanly possible. I can remember, well, you, you know what I wanted in college and didn't achieve that. And then here we had this opportunity. And I remember after we won the game, it takes several months to get the rings, right? So I remember praying, you know, Lord, please don't let me die till I can at least see it. <laughs> let me just give a, get a look at it. What are you, 25 at this time? Probably, probably. And uh, uh, so, but, but as time goes on, you know, and then I, well, as you know, I won two Super Bowl rings or was a part of two Super Bowl teams. And uh, when you think back, you think of the relationships, not exactly specific plays, although you think of some or games, or Super Bowl rings, but the guys I played uh, with were just outstanding, great friends, and uh, just awesome football players. In conjunction with that, Ted, you might have ended up in Dallas or somewhere else <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, from Illinois, but you stayed around in Pittsburgh afterward for a time. And I'm wondering just the experience of playing for the Rooney family, this organization, the Steelers team, and the community of Pittsburgh and Western Pennsylvania, do you still look back on that and still feel that they're just, it was a perfect storm? The way, what Steeler football means to this community? Yeah, you know, a perfect storm in a, just a perfect situation. You couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, the Steelers are, they have to be the model for the NFL as far as an organization goes. When you look at the last three head coaches, Spanning, help me out, 50, Since 60 19, yards. Since 1969. And, and, uh, and you look at what other teams do, it's a revolving door. And you wonder why. Well, it, 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 uh, an organization is always led by the, from the top down, it really seems like it. And, you know, Art Senior, when I was there, was just the absolute best. What a great man. Uh, everybody just loved him. And Dan carried that on in art today. So, um, yeah, it's just been uh, the perfect situation. Then talking about the fan base, the Steeler Nation is a real entity. You know, I'm not living in Pittsburgh anymore. I did for 31 years total. But no matter where I go, even in Illinois, there's always Steeler fans. And that's pretty cool. And I can relate, obviously, and I know where they're coming from. So. Steelers Nation is very real. It is. Ted, you're an important part of that legacy. Thank you so much. It was great to see you. It, my pleasure, Stan. Okay. Thanks for having me.